go, 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 let's get it. I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic, so I cannot turn it on or off. Okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick, I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most, I tell her little bitch, so extra. Am my gun up on me, but I run up on me, niggas, they wanna fight, they some blood. Hagaromo on his deathbed after giving Ashura, his son, his powers. He would use the little bit he has left before he died to force his own reincarnation. But because of how little chakra he had left, it's gonna take decades before it would be complete. Maybe even centuries, who knows? Now, we skip to Naruto's birth, and when the boy is born, Kurama the Ninetales will stop his attack. The Ninetales fills a familiar chakra, but this hole would be long enough for Kashina to chain him down, and then, like in canon, he would be sealed inside of Naruto. Naruto though, when he grows up, would still be the same as in canon as for his personality, but for some reason, the boy would always give off a tremendous presence. Naruto in this timeline would be at the top of his class, ahead of Sasuke. One day though, Naruto walked home from the Hokage's office, but as he got closer and closer to his apartment, he saw blood in the street. He followed it to find a masked man killing the Uchiha clan. Naruto jumps forward throwing a kunai that goes straight through him. The masked man then showed off his chains and released his bloodlust on Naruto. Naruto then stood in true fear but behind the masked man he saw a little boy run out of his house. Then the masked man turned and went for the kill but Naruto's body moved on its own grabbing the boy and holding him, trying to protect him. The masked man, however, phased through Naruto and he cut the boy's neck. Naruto looks down, watching the lifeless body fall to the ground. Naruto, through all of these constant emotions, unlocks a one Tomoe Sharingan. Why? The masked man gives no answer. Naruto picks up a sword in the street, and then he prepares himself. The masked man runs forward, reaching for Naruto's right eye, but Naruto ducks under the attack and manages to cut the masked man's shoulder. As blood begins to leak out, he kicks Naruto away. But this only poofs Naruto, revealing that he was a clone. From behind, the masked man Naruto swung his sword down, but he would watch confused as it st goes straight through him. Naruto is then grabbed by his throat and he would drop the sword. Do you really believe that you could truly best me, boy? I, Madara Uchiha, will show you something beyond strength. You couldn't even imagine it. Madara puts Naruto into a genjutsu and drops him to the ground. How does he have a Sharingan? Well, Sensei and Uchiha, there is much more to this than I imagined. Naruto Uzumaki, I guess I'll keep you alive for now. Madara then disappears and then Naruto would be awoken in the morning by a medical ninja. Hey, are you alive, they would say. It took Naruto all night to barely break this genjutsu. Naruto sits up to see Lord Third as well. Naruto looks around and he goes back to grab the boy that was hurt, but his body is gone. Naruto then falls to the ground crying. Haruzen walks up to him, putting a hand on his shoulder. Everyone was dead when we arrived. I am truly sorry, Naruto. Naruto turns to Haruzen with tears going down his eyes and the rage in his red Sharingan eyes. He then speaks, I vow to kill Madara 
Uchiha. Haruzen looks at Naruto with shock. Naruto, how do you? But before he could finish, Naruto had to walk back, picking up the blade that was left on the ground, and he cuts the middle of his palm and then squeezes his hand as so blood drops on the soil. I vow with my own blood to kill Madara Uchiha. Naruto didn't realize it at first, but this was an attack on the Uchiha clan. So he actually realizes someone close to him who might be dead. So he turns to Haruzen with the most serious expression that he's ever had. Where is Sasuke? Haruzen is able to smile at this, saying that he is in the hospital. Naruto tries to run forward in that direction, but he falls to the ground, coughing up blood. He was only able to move because of the adrenaline going through his body. But after being taken to the hospital and examined, Naruto is found to have two broken ribs on his left side where he was kicked by the masked man. Naruto then will be in the hospital for two months. During this time, Sasuke had came to visit him. And there they had a conversation that went a little like this. Naruto while laying down, Here's a knock on the door, and then Sasuke enters. Sasuke sits next to Naruto's bed and then says, I'm sorry you got injured, Naruto, but I'll fix this myself. He will pay for this. I know you want revenge, but he is my problem and mine alone. Naruto laughs. Sasuke, that's fine with me as long as you stay out of my way. I heard that Itachi was part of it as well. Sasuke would be confused, but then Naruto says Itachi wasn't the only one there. A masked man known as Madara killed some of the Uchihas as well, and he is my target and mine alone to hunt. Sasuke stands up, looking down at Naruto. I also heard Lord Third say you might be an Uchiha as well. So I have two more questions for you, Naruto. Can you show me your Sharingan? And if you are a Nuchia, will you do the CRA so that I do not have to? Naruto closes his eyes, reopening them, showing off his one Tomoe Sharingan. And then he says, I'll do the CRA for you, Sasuke. I'll restore our clan to what it should be. Sasuke nods, and then he begins to leave. But Naruto would tell him to stop, and Sasuke walks back to his side. Sasuke then makes eye contact, and is put in a genjutsu. After about 30 minutes, Sasuke would still be standing, but he breaks the genjutsu, having sweat all over him. Now look at them, Sasuke. Sasuke would pull out a kunai, looking at his eyes to see a one Tomoe Sharingan. He had reawakened them. Sasuke runs off to do his training but as he does he whispers thank you naruto a couple more weeks go by and naruto would be released from the hospital and he first goes to the hokage's office walking in ah naruto how are your ribs naruto holds aside they're almost fully healed but i want to rest a little longer before i begin training with you again i see Good judgment as usual, but Haruzen, don't ever ask Sasuke to do the CRA again because I'll be the one to restore my clans. Haruzen's eyes widen, then they go to Naruto to get him DNA tested. And the results came out to show that Naruto has Uchiha and Uzumaki DNA but he also has unidentifiable DNA as well that isn't in the data books. If you're wondering what this is, this will be Naruto's Atsutsuki clan DNA. After this, Haruzen approves of Naruto being in the CRA, but it won't be taken into consideration until the boy is older and has become a ninja. Naruto, for the next couple of days, decides to rest on his rooftop of the apartment that he lives in. Once he feels like he is fully healed, Naruto
begins his rough training for the next five years. We now see a 12 year old Naruto with a guinea headband on, walking through the leaf at night. This would be when Mizuki Sensei dashes by with the scroll of sealing. Mizuki looks back, waving at Naruto. Naruto does the same, smiling, but he does it with Mizuki's arm. Before the man could process what happened, Naruto was standing with his head. Just like that, it was over. If you guys want a proper scaling of Naruto at this point in the story, I'd say even though his rank is Ginning, his skill is high tuning. Naruto then goes into the forest and he goes through the jutsu that are in the scroll. He sees a couple that interest them and he writes them down. One is a sealing jutsu, so he writes that down. Another is named the Flying Raijin. The reason for this, well, the reason for Naruto thinking that he needs this is because he has a flashback of his fight with Madara. He believes that this could best help him to touch someone who becomes intangible. Then he finds another jutsu, the Moti Shadow Clone Jutsu. He looks at it and easily memorizing it. He doesn't even have to write it down. Naruto returns the scroll and reports to Haruzen what happened. The next day at the academy, the teams are assigned and they're the same as in canon. And this is due to Haruzen pulling strings so that Naruto and Sasuke could stay by each other's side because those two were impacted by the massacre to the Uchiha clan. While Team 7 waits in the classroom, Naruto then walks over to Sasuke. Show me your eyes, Sasuke. Sasuke smirks, showing off a two Tomoe Sharingan. Naruto then one-ups him by showing off his own three Tomoe Sharingan. It seems as every day goes by, our goal becomes closer and closer. Sasuke nods, and here's a side note. I don't know if I ever said this before, but since Naruto is Hagoromo's reincarnate, he has an affinity for every chakra nature, every natural chakra nature, not Keke Genkai's. Back to the story though. This is when Kashi walks in, and when he looks at his students, he goes into the corner where his gaze does, and he sees Naruto and Sasuke turn to him, both with their Sharingan active. Kakashi then thinks to himself, well, Lord Third did say these two were different, both unlocking the Sharingan at age 7. That is a crazy feat. Alright, meet me at the rooftop, he would say, and then he disappears. When they arrive and sit down, Kakashi asks them to tell them, or tell him, a like, a dislike, and a goal or dream they have for the future. Sasuke says the same as in canon, and so does Sakura. Naruto, however, says, I'm more or less like Sasuke, but my dream will always have two parts. First, to kill Madara Uchiha, and the second is to restore our clan. Both the Uzumaki and the Uchiha rest in my hands. So tell me, Sensei, can you do that? Can you train me to the level of God Shinobi? Kakashi wouldn't have any words for Naruto's questions. All he can say is to meet them tomorrow for the next part. Well, their next test, the bell test, and for them not to eat breakfast. Kakashi leaves, heading to Haruzen's office, and when he arrives, him and Lord Third discuss Naruto's goals. Lord Third, is it even possible for someone like Madara Uchiha to be alive? Haruzen sighs and then looks out the window as he says, Naruto told me that on that night, the night of the Uchiha clan massacre, a man in a mask declared himself as Madara and showed off impressive feats against Naruto. But 
At this time, Naruto wasn't even close to the strength that he has now. So I do have my doubts. Either way, Kakashi, Naruto is set on killing that man. No matter what, he sees that as his goal. Now, the next day, Team 7 waits on Kakashi, as usual, and they would be making a plan. This is when their sensei would appear and explains the belt test. Once the countdown is over, Naruto and Sasuke run forward. Sasuke dodges the kunai that is thrown at him, but when he looks back towards them, a fireball is being sent his way. When he tries to dodge, he notices that he can't because Naruto is holding him still, not letting go, so that they were both hit by the blast. Naruto after would stand perfectly fine as he's now holding a log. However, Kakashi sits in a tree watching them, but Naruto appears in front of him, kicking him back into the open. This would be the point in the plan when Sakura runs forward as a distraction while Sasuke sends another fireball as cover, this one twice the size as the other. Kakashi would try to keep calm, but he then notices that as Sakura would try to grab the bells, Naruto rushed in, teleporting, and then he grabs Sakura, disappearing. But Sakura had actually grabbed the bells from Kakashi's waist before she was teleported with Naruto. And then, after being hit by the fireball, Kakashi would jump out of the ground, telling them that they passed. And Naruto and Sasuke wouldn't be satisfied, as they both hand their bells to Sakura. We aren't done yet, Naruto would say. And then Sasuke smiles, revealing a demon wind shuriken. And Naruto coats his blade and lightning. Sasuke throws the shuriken as Kakashi manages to dodge, flipping away from the fight, and he reveals his own Sharingan to them. Sasuke smirks, and then he runs forward as Naruto would do something odd. Naruto puts his sword back on his back, and then he creates a black staff from his hand. Naruto then makes a clone that takes his sword rushing at Kakashi. Kakashi would easily cut through this clone of Naruto with a lightning blade, but Naruto appears in front of Kakashi again, clashing with his own lightning blade that he had just copied from Kakashi. Kakashi kicks Naruto away, but then this is when Naruto finally activated his three Tomoe Sharingan. It's time I take this more serious, Kakashi Sensei. Naruto then puts Kakashi into a genjutsu called Jiryoku, or gravity. In this genjutsu, Kakashi would be crushed with a never-ending weight that increased every minute. On the outside, Kakashi fell to the ground, and Naruto walked over to him. Well, he walked over to Sasuke first, telling him good job, and Sasuke would compliment him too. Naruto then goes over, picking up Kakashi, and he takes Kakashi to the roof of his home. Kakashi wakes up hours later on the rooftop. He was only put in this genjutsu because he had let his guard down, and if he had didn't or went all out from the fight, he would have easily won against them. Kakashi looks around and sees Naruto sitting on the edge, looking out at the world. Kakashi then walks over, sitting down next to Naruto. That genjutsu was something else, Naruto. Naruto turns slightly to meet the smile of Kakashi. Naruto shows Kakashi his hand where he has the scar, and he explains to him what happened that night. Naruto's body then becomes hot with rage that could be visual and Kakashi would put a hand on his shoulder. It's okay. Don't let the hate consume you. If the masked man ever appears in the leaf again, I'll let you handle him. Naruto smiles, and then he stands up as he hands Kakashi the bells and a book that he had dropped. Hey Kakashi-sensei, what was Minato Namikaze? 
the great fourth Hokage like? His eyes would widen at this question, as Naruto would then throw him a flying Raijin kunai. Naruto shows Kakashi that he's already perfected this jutsu, and Kakashi decides to leave after telling Naruto that he will tell him the story of the yellow flash another time. Naruto nods as Kakashi would leave, and then for the next couple of weeks, Team 7 does a lot of low ranked missions, rescuing cats and just helping out the village in general. This would be when they request for a higher ranked mission, but before they could do that, Naruto and Kakashi would teach Sasuke and Sakura more jutsu. Naruto would do this because he wants everyone to be prepared just in case but his true intentions would be that everyone would be able to defend themselves against the masked man if he ever appeared sasuke would learn the shidori while naruto teaches sakura some earth and water style jutsu examples being the water dragon and water pillar and the mud wall all of this training would have taken team seven another week but when they go to Hokage's office, Haruzen smiles, noticing that Naruto and Sasuke have a very calm nature. They then are assigned the C-rank bridge builder mission. Tazuna walks in, looking at the team, and then back at Haruzen. Haruzen, are all just a bunch of dumb brats. You really think they can guide me all the way there? Naruto smiles and him and Sasuke make eye contact as they both flare up their aura and their killer intent towards Tazuna, making him fall to the ground. Naruto and Sasuke and Sakura then laugh as they then look down at the man. Naruto steps forward, showing off his Sharingan, and you're just a stupid old man who I could kill at any point during this mission. Tazuna's heart drops and he decides to stay quiet and away from this kid. Team 7 then goes to the gate of the village and Naruto yells out, let's do this. Sakura and Sasuke nod as Team 7 now heads out on their first C rank mission. As they now walk out of the leaf, Naruto then says, one day I'll become the strongest and avenge my clans. Sasuke then puts his arm around Naruto not before me, you idiot. They then begin to laugh and smile as they walk forward. Naruto, who now considers Sasuke family. Tazuna, however, was not amused and he despised them. And he knew if they didn't take this serious, they would die. Kakashi would take note of how Tazuna had a worried expression, but decides to question him on it later. The team continues to walk forward, talking about random topics to pass the time, and that's when Naruto would step on a puddle on the ground. Hey guys, stop. Everyone looks back at Naruto. Kakashi would then question him. What is it? Hey sensei, did it rain yesterday? Not that I remember. I knew it. Everyone. But before Naruto could finish, he had to pull out his sword and block an attack from one of the demon mist brothers. Sasuke would then rush back to Naruto with Sakura and he would then jump in the air, preparing a jutsu. Sakura hits the other mist ninja with a water serpent, but it doesn't do that much damage. And that wasn't really the goal anyways. When Sasuke hits him with a lightning shuriken, it allows him to do double the damage. Naruto looks back at his opponent to say, Well, I can't let them get ahead of me and show off like that. Naruto jumps away and the Mist Ninja runs at Tazuna, but he is then stabbed through the chest by Naruto's lightning sword. He had used the flying Raijin to teleport him instantly, right before he had killed Tazuna. Team 7 then regroups with their sensei who congratulates them on their strength. This is when Tazuna would join them and say, yeah, you guys were amazing. The air then becomes stiff as Team 7 all releases their bloodlust at the same time towards him. Naruto teleports behind him holding a kunai to his throat with his sword. 
All right, Kakashi Sensei, you give the word and I'll end it here. Kakashi then interrogates Tazuna, learning of the bandits, Gato, and other high ranked ninja that they need to watch out for. Sasuke then pulls Naruto and Sakura aside to tell them the plan, and he wants to use it on the next high ranked ninja before the plan to work. They all have to be in perfect sync. Team 7 and Tazuna later hop in the boat and begin their adventure once again. After getting off the boat, Naruto looks forward as if someone was watching him. Instinctively, he threw some flying Raijin kunai in that direction. Zabuza, who was in the trees watching them, and he would watch where all the kunai land, he would say, Is this kid some kind of idiotic genius? There's no way he can sense where I am. So what's up with him? He's a strange one, all right. I'll have to make sure I kill him. This is when Zabuza sees Kakashi. No wonder those two knuckleheads didn't come back, because he's here. The copy ninja himself. Zabuza then jumps down to see that somehow, everyone had vanished, even though they were just right in front of him. He thinks that he was put in a genjutsu, but by causing a little pain to himself, he wasn't. From behind him, Kakashi attempted to stab his eye with the kunai, but Zabuza barely manages to block with the executioner's blade. Where's that old man, damn it? Zabuza then flips away to dodge a lightning cover blade of Naruto. Damn it, I was so close. Sorry, Sensei. We'll have to get him next time. Don't worry about it, Naruto. Kakashi then monologues. To be honest, or 100% honest, that was a fantastic plan, just on the wrong opponent. If it had it been a high tuning or even a lower joning, Naruto would have ended the battle right here. Sasuke and Sakura appear from out of nowhere trying to land a water lightning combo on Zabuza, but he would counter the water and he lands a kick on Sasuke before he could finish the lightning jutsu. Zabuza then tries to remember all the locations of each kunai, suspecting that's how Naruto teleported but he's not sure yet. He then goes for the nearest one and finds Tazuna. I've got you now. But that's when Tazuna turns into Naruto and the blonde haired Ginin uses his sword to cut across his chest. You damn brat, <coughs> I'll kill you. Sasuke then jumps into the air, looking around for Naruto and finding him, sending down flame birds. Kakashi and Sakura dash toward where Sasuke and Naruto were. Hey sensei, throw me. Kakashi quickly picks up Sakura, launching wind to the bottom of her feet, sending her at Zabuza. While the Mist Ninja was distracted with Naruto and Sasuke's attacks, Sakura came out of nowhere. And with the flying Raijin kunai in her hand, she managed to cut one of Zabuza's eyes. Then he screams in agony. That's it. Zabuza then creates a thick mist, making it hard for everyone to see. Naruto, without hesitation, teleports to Tazuna and teleports the man back to his apartment in the leaf. Stay here. I'll be back. And if you leave, I'll find you and kill you. Tazuna gulps in nervousness. And when Naruto comes back, he sees Kakashi in a bubble of water while Sasuke and Sakura were fighting a Zabuza clone. Naruto would jump into the fight, kicking the clone back. This is when Sasuke touches Naruto's shoulder while looking at Sakura. It's time to use it. Make sure you time everything perfect or it won't work. Sakura runs at the clone, then she does a jutsu. Earth style, pillar barrage. As rock pillars come out the ground, one after another, slamming into the clone who isn't able to dodge all of them. Then. Sasuke sends out the largest fireball jutsu that he's ever done, scorching the clone. But before the clone could even recover for a moment, Naruto had cloaked his blade in lightning and wind, now sending a flurry of air and lightning slashes that cut through the clone and towards Zabuza that forces him to remove his hand, freeing Kakashi. The Team 7 burst attack was in full effect. Kakashi gains distance and looks at his team. Great job, but we're still not done. 
all of them then ready themselves and that's when Zabuza is hit with needles to the neck. He falls over and the mist finally clears. The mist ninja with a mask says that he was hunting him for weeks and now they've made it easier for him to be killed. Kakashi walks over checking his pulse and Naruto follows right behind. Kakashi nods giving the signal that he was dead. But Naruto pulls out the needles and then Zabuza's heartbeat starts again as he begins to breathe. Naruto looks up grabbing Kakashi quickly teleporting them back to Sasuke as giant ice shards then land in the spots that they were standing. When everyone looks back the two of them were gone. Naruto then grabs Tazuna from his apartment and they would head to Tazuna's home. This time Kakashi isn't knocked out and Team 7 already knows how to walk on trees and water. This allows them not only to train but to come up with strategies to use to beat the two ninja. The next day they help work on the bridge while still planning out strategies. After this Tazuna would tell them the story of Inari's father and what had happened to him after the gang had got a hold of him. This would motivate Naruto who says I'll be back don't follow me I'm going to create a perfect counter to ice jutsu and I'll prove that heroes really do exist in this world. Naruto goes back to the forest training harder than ever to create a mixed jutsu of fire and wind. This is when he passes out from chakra exhaustion and from not resting since they had just started the mission. He would then wake up, lied against a tree next to a woman in pink with black hair. They then talk about things that are important to them. And she asks Naruto, why are you training so hard? I have something to prove, not only to someone who's lost hope, but also to the ninja world to show them that I've become someone who can burden the hopes and wishes of others. You talk a lot of big talk for someone who's only a guinean. This comment angers Naruto, and he stands up looking down on the woman. I've worked so hard to get through all the hate, suffering, and tragedies that I had to face. There's no way that I can go back on any of my words. I'm not a coward. I'll back up every statement I make because now that's my ninja way as Naruto then stabs his hand with a kunai trying to force a scar. Naruto then begins to continue his training and the woman leaves the area. Naruto keeps working until eventually he has a breakthrough, a wind shuriken with pure red flames that surrounds it. Naruto smiles as he then throws the jutsu through the forest cutting down trees. Naruto would see the woman from a distance as she waved continuing the walk off. Naruto then put some of the pieces together. How did she know I was a guinea? Wait a minute. No. When he looks back to see where the woman was, she had vanished. And Naruto smiled as he then said under his breath, See you on the battlefield then. Now we begin with Naruto returning to Tazuna's house at night. He's all ruffled up from training and the kid then yells out at Naruto. Why work so hard if you're just gonna die? Nothing matters anymore. Naruto interrupts him. I'll show you a real hero one day. And that's a promise because I, Naruto Uzumaki, have figured out a way to beat Ice Jutsu. Everyone's eyes widen as Naruto begins to glow, showing off not only a flame and wind shuriken, but also a new flame aura that surrounds his body and begins to melt the things around him in the house. And this would also cause everyone else in the room to begin to sweat at the immense heat. Naruto would stop, however, beginning to sweat himself, but it does have limits. And then Naruto sits down. Hey kid, here. Naruto throws him one of his kunai. Anytime you need a hero, this will bring you one. Naruto then goes to sleep. He wakes up late from chakra exhaustion and needing sleep. 
The rest of the team who already went to the bridge were surprised to see the workers were beat up and bloody. And this is when Haku and Zabuza appear. Kakashi goes for Zabuza while Sakura goes for Haku with Sasuke. Back at Tazuna's place, Naruto was getting ready to leave and that's when he heard a scream. Naruto runs in the direction and sees bandits holding the boy in the air. Hey brat, let go of that kunai and give it here. It looks pretty nice and expensive. This is when the kid stabs the man with the kunai. Naruto teleports in, killing the other two bandits in seconds. Naruto then looks down at him. How can you say that you don't believe in heroes when you and your father are heroes? The kid then begins to cry. I'll be back. Don't worry. As Haku and Sasuke are about to clash once again, Naruto appears using his sword to do an upward slash, cutting the mask off of Haku. This is when Haku reveals that he's a man to them. Naruto then begins to heat up. All right, you two follow my lead and wait for an opening. Don't get too close to me. So let's move team seven. Naruto rushes in and as ice is sent at him, it melts before even touching him. What is he? Haku would say. And then lightning is sent towards him from Sasuke. Haku tries to jump back, but he's then stopped seeing an earth wall that was created by Sakura. That cuts off his movement. And then another, boxing him in so that Sasuke could land his lightning strike. This team seven was quick and their chemistry together had become unparalleled. Haku then sends ice at Sakura and Sasuke, but Naruto created clones that stopped the heat for them. Naruto then gets a good look at his face and realizes who it actually was. Naruto becomes sad for a moment, but he knows the mission comes first. Naruto looks at Sasuke. Let's do it. Let's do it now. You ready, Sakura? Yeah. Naruto and Sasuke then do hand signs at the same time saying, Fire style, whirlpool of flames. As they then spit fire in the direction of Haku, the man sees a pink haired girl in the middle of the flames. And then with two kunai, Sakura slashes across the eyes of Haku, blinding the man. The jutsu that was done was a combo jutsu known as the tornado princess while Sasuke and Naruto both sent spiraling fire at their opponent, Naruto picks up Sakura and launches her with wind towards the opponent in the middle of the flames. Haku would quickly recover, not knowing where Sakura was, sending ice in the surrounding area, but Naruto teleported in, grabbing her and going back to Sasuke. It's over now. This is when a clone of Zabuza stabs Sasuke on the back. But in the sliver of a second before impact, Naruto switches places with Sasuke, allowing himself to be stabbed through his chest. Zabuza scoffs. Haku, handle the rest now. As the clone then poofs, Sasuke looks down at the lifeless body of Naruto and his three Tomoe Sharingan was awakened in this moment. Sakura had become enraged as well, gaining her own pink aura. Both of them looked at Haku with angry expressions. The only words that could be read from their faces was ones chanting his death. The two then rushed in, Haku not being able to see a change. Well, a lot did change. Sakura and Sasuke were going blow after blow, comboing different attacks and with Sasuke slashing at Haku with the sword of Naruto, while fighting, he had tears in his eyes. Kakashi, while fighting Zabuza, had saw Naruto's body and then began fighting harder as well, doing it for his dead student. It got to the point where Kakashi was even outpacing him in every aspect. Even though he would have to wait a second to watch what Jutsu Zabuza would do to copy it, he would somehow get it out faster. Zabuza then swung his sword but Kakashi blitzed him, stabbing him with a kunai that he had on his side. And Kakashi flipped into the air, launching a lightning blade down at Zabuza. 
Haku could sense death of his master and he would sprint in that direction using ice as cover, but it seemed as the world had then moved slow for someone else. Naruto woke up in water, looking at an orange fox. Well, well, it seems we meet again, brat. Again, I don't remember you. Could you remind me of the first time that we met? It was when you were a baby and I was sealed inside of you by the fourth Hokage. Naruto nods sitting down. So, is there any way for me to live or am I about to die here? Cause I do know what happened to me. Take a little bit of my power and I'll do the rest. Naruto walks closer to the gate and then he undoes the seal to the shock of Kurama. Over the years, Naruto had learned many things from the Hokage, such as seals and him being an Uzumaki. This led to all sorts of jutsu. Naruto then sits down in front of the fox. Okay, well you seem strong, so let's finish this together instead of one of us using power. Kurama was still curious on how the boy gave off the presence of Hagarama. Yeah, whatever, brat. Don't expect me to do this all the time, though. Naruto smiles. That's fine with me. As Haku would get closer and closer, he then begins to fall. As Kakashi then finishes off Zabuza with the lightning blade, everyone looks at Naruto in shock of a one-tailed chakra cloak. Naruto looks at his hands. This is enough. Thanks, Nine Tails. The cloak disappears and Naruto falls to the ground. Sakura and Sasuke run at him crying and hugging him. I'm sorry, did I scare you guys? Kakashi gets closer to his team thinking, can Naruto already control the Nine Tails? Impossible. This would be when Gato and his henchmen would appear. Sasuke helps Naruto stand up. He then takes off his backpack, dropping it, and he opens the backpack to show weights at the bottom, but on top of the weights were a bunch of kunai. Throw them, everyone. I'll need help for this, and I'll do it in one go. Kakashi knows exactly what Naruto is doing. He then says to himself in his head, Minato Sensei, you would be so proud of him. Everyone does what they're told by Naruto, and then Naruto would activate his Sharingan. It's over. In 40 seconds, the battle is over, and Naruto stands up looking in the sky as it then begins to rain. His team runs over to him, but he had passed out while standing. Kakashi then puts him on his back, and Team 7 heads back to the house of Tazuna, the bridge builder. And days later, the bridge is complete. Team 7 then de prepares to depart, and Naruto looks at Inari. Make sure you keep your mom safe, and become strong. The kid begins to cry, nodding at Naruto's words. Tazuna then says, I'll name the bridge after you. Naruto smiles. Now I'll have to come back to see it. Naruto throws up a hand, waving, as he runs to catch up with his team. Days pass after they return to the leaf, because Naruto had teleported them back, and this is when Naruto runs into Konohamaru and his team. Naruto sits down to tell him of his adventure in the land of waves. While this was going on, Kakashi met up with many other teachers and sensei. Kakashi then tells them about Naruto. When he came back to life, he was even stronger. Kakashi then begins to remember everything that happened. One movement of his hand and he killed a high ranked Chunin ninja. The power of the Nine Tails is no joke and Naruto controlled it just like it was a play toy. Aruka smiles at hearing the progress of Naruto. After this, while walking, Naruto and Konohamaru run into a sand ninja. The sand ninja would then pick Konohamaru up. Out of my way, brat. Shut up and get out of mine, he would say. Naruto wasn't paying attention to that though. He easily took Konohamaru back and then he saw a red haired boy who stared back at him. Shikaku inside of Gara had noticed something similar to his father, but he also felt the presence of his brother, Karama. While Gara gave off a hateful stare towards Naruto, our main character only smiled, walking past Gara to say, don't get killed because of someone else's mistakes. 
Gara turns around to face Naruto, but he was already back in front of him, holding a blade to his throat. While Gara had felt the fear of Naruto's overwhelming pressure and power. There's something about you. It reminds me of myself. Naruto puts his sword to his back and then he walks away. Come on, Konohamaru, we got stuff to do. Yes, sir, Naruto. Sasuke, who was in the tree, watches and would jump down after Naruto and Konohamaru left. Why are you here? Tamari, who would slightly blush at the sight of Sasuke, said, Wait, you don't know about the exams? Far away in the leaf, Haruzen called a meeting with Kakashi and the other sensei. He would then tell them about the upcoming tuning exams. Azuma and Kurenai both accept the offer to have their teams participate, but Kakashi was thinking and then he would speak his mind. Naruto should have already been a tuning after taking down a high ranked rogue ninja. And after he gets more training, I'd even put him on a low joning level. But I do not want to take the opportunity away from Sasuke and Sakura, so Team 7 will participate as well. Later that day, Kakashi meets up with his team, giving them the tuning exam papers. Naruto nods, being more excited than anyone else. Hey Kakashi Sensei, I have a question. If I were to fight another Jinchuriki, would I win? Kakashi is confused, but he nods, saying, You have the Nine Tails, the strongest of all of them, so I assume you could take on more than one tail beast at a time. Naruto smiles, Hey Sasuke, come with me. We're gonna push our eyes for the next few days. The two run off and Sakura goes to train with Kakashi. First, Naruto and Sasuke go to the abandoned Uchiha compound. Naruto would try to read the stone tablet, but he can't. Maybe we need this, Sasuke would say, pointing at a part that he could read. It was the only words on the whole tablet that the two could read. The Mangekyo Sharingan. Alright Sasuke, me and you will get this Mangekyo Sharingan before the exams is over. So now, Naruto and Sasuke for days stay in the Uchiha library reading many things about the clan, learning about Madara, Fugaku, and even some small details about Itachi and Shisui. There were also many other clansmen and women who had unlocked these powerful eyes. Naruto then figured out a perfect plan for Sasuke to unlock his Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto plans to fake his own death during the shooting exams to give Sasuke more power. Sasuke, however, wanted to gain these eyes from killing his older brother, seeing as that was his ultimate goal, and this would be the emotion that he needs to gain this power. The two had very different plans for the future. Another day would go by, and Team 7 meets up for the first part of the exams. When they walk in, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura immediately notice the Genjutsu. This causes one of the door guards to rush in trying to fight Sasuke, but Rock Lee stops both of them. Naruto then makes eye contact with Neji and both bow in respect to each other while Sasuke and Lee prepare to fight. The reason for this is because Neji believes in destiny, and ever since Naruto was little, he was looked at as the golden egg of the generation, and Neji believes that's why he was hated by all the adults not because he has the nine tails inside of him. Someone who will always have a bright future. So, Neji respects Naruto's destiny. Now, in this timeline, Sasuke and Lee are evenly matched with Sasuke being able to just barely see Lee's attacks before they happen. Before Sasuke could land another blow, Naruto stopped him. And then, he looks at Lee. Naruto then puts his arm around Sasuke. Look around, all these people now know a couple of your moves. We gotta remain more composed, come on, let's go to the real testing room. When they find the room, their sensei was there. Kakashi then says, win it all. As the three nod, heading inside. They look at all the participants, and then Sasuke sees a blonde girl as she jumps on his back. As she then begins to flirt with him, and so does Sakura. 
Naruto runs over to Shikamaru and Choji, who were some of his first friends besides Sasuke, who is now more like family. Hey Shikamaru, what's up Naruto? Choji then continues to eat his chips waving. I heard you defeated a high ranked ninja. Naruto then pulls out the mask of Haku showing them. Sensei let me keep it. Choji will yell out how cool it is and then Naruto puts it away. Naruto turns his back to them and says, I want to see you guys get as far as me. So don't lose until one of us fights the other. Naruto then goes to take his seat and so does everyone else. But as Naruto goes to sit down, he sees another team that was from the leaf. He then sees Hinata and the two bow in respect and Naruto would wish her good luck. This makes her blush and Kiba gets angry. Naruto sits down next to a taller kid with glasses and a ponytail. The proctor then explains the rules and how they can't cheat. The test begins and Naruto and Sasuke activate their Sharingan, copying down the movements of Shikamaru and some movements of Sakura, seeing as Herb always being with Kakashi would also heighten her intelligence. But Naruto would also use much of the knowledge that he already knows to answer some of the questions. Team 7 waits out just as many other teams do and they pass, heading off to the second part of the tuning exams. Naruto looks at the forest and then at his team. This looks like a perfect place to practice our combo jutsus. This is when a purple haired lady then says, don't take this lightly brat or you'll die. Naruto would laugh in her face and then continues to talk to his team. This is when she throws a kunai at Naruto's cheek, but he turns his head, showing off a Sharingan and catching the kunai in his mouth. He then spits it out. All right, I'll take your advice and get serious. That goes for you two as well. Team 7 then looks at her as their aura then becomes monstrous, mostly being Naruto's aura, but it feels like a veteran Joni team. Everyone then backs away giving them space and the rules are then explained as she then says killing is allowed. When team 7 hears this, Naruto would then get ready to head in and then when they head in, Naruto turns back pointing at the red haired boy from before. You better not lose until the final part cause I will defeat you myself. Gara would scoff as team 7 heads deep into the forest. The red haired boy then says under his breath, don't die cause I'll crush you with my own two hands. Naruto then goes off to use the bathroom and comes back. Sasuke quickly figured out that it was a fake and then the real Naruto came in cutting the ninja's head off. Naruto then explains that he was a shadow clone and the real Naruto was fighting a giant snake. Naruto, far away, would dodge an attack from the snake while cutting one of its fangs off. I hope those idiots are okay. This is when a strange man appears in front of Sasuke, ready to fight, and he takes off his hat to say, I've been waiting for this moment, Sasuke Uchiha. The man would then release his monstrous presence, scaring Sasuke and petrifying his movements. But Sakura would quickly help him to snap him out of it. Sasuke, pay attention. This is serious. He's much stronger than Zabuza and Haku. We have to win this, or at least hold off till we can use our combo jutsus with Naruto. Sasuke would be able to snap out. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Naruto, you better hurry up. And far away, Naruto would feel this presence as the snake then jumps at him, but Naruto is able to dodge, landing a cut on the snake with his sword. But this is when the snake was slightly scratching back, and he looks at his hand that was covered in the bandages, and he looks at his skin, noticing that it's still changing. This is just great. I know they're fine, but I need to kill this snake. How can I do that quickly? Sasuke then goes in to fight the man, but he's clearly outmatched in everything. Sakura then helps by launching a water pillar and a water dragon that she recently learned from Kakashi. But the strange man was able to slither around each attack. And then Sasuke's whole arm became enveloped in lightning. Let's end this now. Sasuke 
begins to charge up even more lightning as he activated his Sharingan. Sasuke decides to predict that the man would try to stretch his neck like he did before. So, with his hand, Sasuke scrapes the ground, causing rocks to fly at his opponent. This was a big distraction. Sasuke then cuts off the legs of the man, only to still be bit on his neck. Sasuke then screams out in pain, running up a tree. Sakura will cover his escape with earth pillars as she rushes towards the man knowing she can't win. She makes a clone that traps him in water. As she then goes to check on Sasuke. Sasuke, are you alright? You need to find Naruto. As they sit in the tree, Naruto would appear, but he seems different now. Let me see your injuries. Sasuke and Sakura show him and then Naruto took the bandages off his right hand. Now, it's very pale, but it then begins to glow green as their injuries are now healed. Naruto wraps his hand back up in the bandages and grips his sword in that hand while having a kunai in the other. The man then appears revealing who he is. I am Orochimaru, the snake sign, and you all are about to be dead. Well, except for him, pointing at Sasuke. Naruto then stands in front of Sasuke and smiles. I'll take you serious then. I'll be stronger than any Sonin around. Naruto then begins to drop his backpack. And as soon as Orochimaru runs at him, it touches the ground and Naruto disappears, blitzing him, hitting him with 300 cuts in an instant. After this, Naruto jumps into the air. He then does a jutsu with one hand. Fire style, fireball jutsu. But as he blows the flames through the bandaged hands, the flames become large, surrounding the trees and area, burning them in the process. And then it still lands on its target. This is when a snake rushes at Sakura and Sasuke. Naruto jumps in the way, blocking the snakes as he looks up at them with his red eyes that now have a slit. Come on, you scaredy cats. Help me out. He's pretty strong, don't you think? Naruto kicked the snake away, looking back at Orochimaru who had healed. Alright then, let's go all out, Kurama. The nine tails within Naruto stood up and set power into him. Naruto then sported a two-tailed cloak with a Sharingan active while the bandages in his hands were blown off, showing that more of his arm was pale. Sasuke and Sakura stood next to him, ready to fight to the end. But when they look around, Orochimaru was gone. Naruto went on a rampage, slamming into trees before he used his pale arm to knock himself out. This was the best decision seeing as he couldn't fully control a two-tailed cloak yet. It was still in the process of working, but against that type of opponent, Naruto was willing to go all out just to win. After this, Sakura turns around hearing Sasuke scream as he passes out due to the curse mark finally taking a toll on his body. Naruto would wake up in the realm of where Kurama was, but both of them were in shock when a black silhouette of a man appeared. It spoke to Naruto while holding his hand. I see. Well, this is only the beginning of my power. It will continue to spread the stronger you become. Kurama then says, recognizing the voice. Is that you, father? The figure turns around nodding and leaving. Kurama will be in shock. So, it seems he passed the power on to this brat. No wonder we get along so well. Naruto would look up at Kurama. Who was that? And Kurama shrugs it off, laying back down. Hurry up and wake up, brat. You're still not done with this exam. Naruto then instantly wakes up. Near water. Sakura had got water for them. It surprised Naruto a little bit. And then he looks up, seeing Sasuke breaking the arms of someone. As another rushes in at his blind spot, Naruto tries to move, but he can't. So he uses the power of the nine tails to then grab the sound ninja, slamming his face into a tree, cracking the base of it. In this timeline, Rock Lee didn't even come to the rescue. But then, Naruto dragged the unconscious sound ninja back, and Sasuke said, 
Hey Naruto, didn't the proctor say killing was allowed? Naruto smirked, picking up the body of his opponent higher and then holding a kunai to his throat. Yeah, but I have a better idea. Who has the scroll we need? I'm sure one of you has it. The one person who wasn't injured dropped the scroll and begged for her team back. Naruto dropped him and Sasuke did the same, barely controlling the rage that dwelled within him. After this, Team 7 heads to the tower, but as they were about to reach it, Naruto then said, I'll be back, I kinda wanna check on something. This is when he teleported to Gara, who was killing a shinobi. Hurry you fool, he says, and then he goes back to his team. Once they were there, they announced the preliminaries because of how many applicants there were. And I'll still be changing two of the fights to make this a little more interesting. So I'll go over the fights that really matter. Sasuke wins easily in his match as usual. The next match with Shino goes the same. Konkuro's match always goes the same. And then we see Ino versus Sakura. Sakura shouts out during the match that they aren't friends. And then when the match begins, she vanishes, slamming her fist into the ground, creating an earth pillar barrage. As the pillars come out of the ground, one of them catches Ino from her blind spot, slamming her into a wall and knocking her unconscious with one attack. And Sakura will be declared the winner. After this, the matches continue on the same. And what was supposed to be Naruto's match changes. It will be Kiba versus Rock Lee. Kiba would easily be blitzed by Rock Lee at the beginning of the match. And as it keeps going, Rock Lee decides to increase the speed, seeing as Kiba didn't want to give up. Kiba then said, Fang over Fang, rushing at Rock Lee, who would easily dodge. And then he jumps back, opening the first gate. Kakashi would look at Guy. You seriously are a maniac. You know that guy? Anything from my student Kakashi. He's the one who pushed himself so hard. And this is his hard work. Go ahead, Lee. Yes, Guy Sensei. Lee would then finish off Kiba, knocking him into a wall, and he'd be unconscious. And so would Akamaru. After this match, Neji versus Hinata would go the exact same. But Naruto really wouldn't get mad. And this was because of how him and Neji respected himself. And Neji was always known to try to prove himself to be stronger. Naruto in this timeline actually knew how the Hyuga clan had operated. So he could see why Neji was going that hard just to win. The next match, well, the one they call is Naruto versus Gara of the Sand. Naruto looks at his team. All right, wish me luck. Sasuke then says, you know you don't need it, but good luck anyway. Sakura would say, you better win or I'll smack you. Naruto becomes slightly frightened, but he jumps down smiling. His gaze will meet that of Gara's. We've been waiting so long for this fight to happen, Gara. So don't disappoint me. Die, you worm. Aw, how hurtful. Are you saying that because you don't like me? Or is that because you can't beat me and you'll insult me instead? I will kill you here. Naruto smiles and then looks up at the third Hokage. He then mouths the words, make sure you watch me. Naruto dashes at Gara, but the redhead Guinea uses sand to block each attack from Naruto. Naruto then gets an idea to do something he hasn't done in a while. Out of Naruto's pale hand comes a black sword, and then he swings it at Gara, and it goes through the sand, cutting him. I thought as much, he would say. Gara would touch his face, seeing the blood, and then he looks at it. You made me bleed, you ignorant rat. Naruto smiles. Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto creates 300 other clones with black receivers that all attack Gara. But as Shikaku is about to get out, Naruto 
puts them both in a genjutsu. In this genjutsu, Shikaku stands behind Gara, as Naruto stands in front of Kurama. Naruto and Kurama look down on the two. You can't win. So sleep, one-tailed Jinchuriki. Gara's eyes then close as he falls asleep on the outside as well. Naruto then looks at Gara's seal, and as he goes to fix it, his brother and sister jump down guarding him. Don't touch him. Huh, suit yourself. I was only going to fix the seal. What? What are you talking about? Naruto then walks away, and after this, they announce the one month training period. Naruto doesn't go with Ebisu, but instead Jiraiya comes early and walks up to Naruto. Come with me, kid. Naruto follows him, and they will end up at Mount Miyaboku. Naruto looks at a green frog, and then at the place that he was. I've been here before. Jiraiya is puzzled. No, you haven't. Fukusaku then speaks. Indeed you have. And now, it's time for you once again to learn Sage Mode. Naruto spends all his training time here and will perfect his Sage Mode due to his body, well, reacting easily and adjusting to the training because he's technically done it before. Naruto returns and the first match of the second round will be Neji versus Rock Lee. Rock Lee uses his gates to increase the speed as Neji will be able to block some of the attacks with the 360 palm rotation. This will be the first time Lee takes off his weights and after he does, the fight is over. Then Shikamaru and Tamari would have their same fight. And then the fight everyone was waiting on, Naruto versus Sasuke. Both of them come late and Naruto would come with Jiraiya, as Sasuke comes with Kakashi. Naruto, at this point, was already in Sage Mode, ready for battle, and having a new outfit. And then, the two were both ready to settle everything right here. Naruto gets in a stance, and so does Sasuke. When the match begins, they both rush at each other. Sasuke sends a punch, but Naruto dodges the attack kicking Sasuke who gains his composure. The black haired boy then begins to say, fire style, fireball jutsu. Naruto gets ready to counter this jutsu but Sasuke was quick, slashing Naruto in his side with a kunai. Naruto would be able to kick Sasuke away but he only lost a little bit of blood and when he goes in for another attack Sasuke would easily dodge sending a lightning shuriken at Naruto who would use a chakra rod to block the attack. And this gives Sasuke enough time to land a cut across Naruto's chest. Sasuke then backs off. Let's take this more serious, Naruto. Naruto smiles, activating his Sharingan and instantly seeing something. Naruto smiles and Sasuke would see it as well. Naruto, move. I can't. And this is when a vengeful Gara used his sand spikes to blow holes through Naruto's chest, causing him to fall to the ground, bleeding out and quickly dying. Sasuke moves quickly to grab Naruto, but it was already too late. Sasuke then looks at Gara, who is losing control. And as soon as he goes to attack him, Gara would run away. Sasuke would chase after him. And this is when Orochimaru appeared bursting through the walls on top of his snakes. The Genjutsu is then cast by Kabuto, while the Sound 4 help attack the village. Sasuke would yell at Gara, why? Why did you take him from me? As he would chase him, and Gara yells back, die, just die, leave me alone. Why are you following me? Sasuke eventually catches up. Sakura would break the Genjutsu and she would help other people wake up. After this, she dashes off to catch her teammate, but she would eventually catch up to him as well as they were fighting Gara. And then Sasuke looks at her, expecting to see that she healed Naruto. Where is he? She looks down at the ground. He died. 
he couldn't dodge the attacks because of the injuries he sustained between the fight between you two. But it wasn't your fault. At this moment, Sasuke's heart dropped. And in his head, he screams. It's my fault. It's my fault. He died because of me. I killed him. I killed him just like... Just like Itachi would have killed him. I hate myself. Why? Why is this happening? But then, a genjutsu Naruto implanted would activate in Sasuke. And this is when he hears the voice of Naruto. Hey Sasuke, it's me. Well, this kind of sucks. Right now I'm either dead or I'm gone. And right now you're having a mental breakdown. Or that's what I assume. This genjutsu is here to let you know to keep pushing forward. Always push forward and strive for your goals, even when I'm not around. Because, remember, you have to be strong. Not just for me, but for the people that look up to you in the Leaf Village. Well, good luck, and I hope to see you again. And, as Gara sends sand at Sasuke, he looks at him with pure rage. And the black-haired boy's eyes would change. His three Tomoe Sharingan had evolved into a Mangekyo Sharingan. And Sasuke looks at Gara's arm, yelling out, Amatarasu! And this is when the black flames appear on the body of Gara, who would scream out in pain. Sasuke looks at Sakura, go help the village. I'll finish this myself. As Sasuke would begin his one-on-one -on -one battle, Naruto would wake up in, well, his mental realm. He sets up, oh, hey, Karama. And then Kurama hits his head. You brat, why did you kill yourself? You could have dodged that attack easily. Naruto laughs. And then the Sage of Six Paths appears. Well, if it isn't you. Hello there, Naruto. Aren't you crafty? But he will lose his vision from those eyes. And they are cursed because my son has had them as well. So give him this gift for me. The man puts out his hand, and Naruto takes this glowing ball of chakra. Alright then, let's fix you up. He places his hands on Naruto's eyes, as they then become purple. Now, I'll send you back. And when I do, summon the king of hell, and then enter his body. Naruto nods, looking back at Kurama. Go ahead, you two should talk. Naruto wakes up noticing how much blood he's lost and he keeps losing it because the holes are still there. Damn it, I can't move. Sakura, who was still helping people, came back so that she could get Naruto's body out of there. And this is when she sees him trying to crawl into a monster. Naruto, you're alive. Let me help you up. As she picks up Naruto, whose blood then goes all over his body, he says, throw me inside quick. Do it now. Without hesitation, she does as her teammate tells her because of the trust and bonds they have. The king of hell then closes his mouth and reopens it as Naruto would then walk out perfectly fine. Now with his purple eyes, we're a Sasuke. And this is when a loud explosion is heard in the forest and Shikaku appears and Sakura points in that direction. Naruto makes a clone. Use my clone to heal people from the leaf. She nods heading off. As Sasuke looks up this giant monster, he prepares himself for anything that could happen and Shikaku would try to step on him. But Sasuke activated the Susano rib cage, barely being able to block it. And Shikaku would stop over and over on Sasuke as the rib cage was beginning to crack. And then the nine-tailed fox jumps on Shikaku, saving Sasuke. As Sasuke looks up at the orange fox, he noticed his eyes begin to hurt and his vision became weaker. He will begin to fall to the ground, but someone had caught him. Who are you? Sasuke turns his head to see someone who resembles Naruto, but looks more like a ghost. But this person who looks like Naruto, for some reason, had purple eyes. Come on, Sasuke. Let's rescue him. He's on top. Here. 
Naruto grabs Sasuke's hand, fusing a small part of Hagoromo's chakra into him. This would allow Sasuke's blindness from the Mangekyo Sharingan to disappear. It seems one of my own is misguided. Let us save him now. What's the plan, Naruto? Well, first, we must get to him. I suggest we borrow the power from my friend. Naruto then does the summoning jutsu, summoning Kurama closer to them. All right, Kurama, get us close. This is when sand is flung at them, but instead of his claws, a purple Suzano sleeve comes on to Kurama's arm. This wasn't the full body armor, this was only a sleeve. And Naruto looks at Sasuke, who was about to pass out from exhaustion. Kurama wastes no time in dashing at Shikaku, who sends more sand. But they get very close, and this would be when the One Tail stops his attack, thinking that Naruto was Hagoromo from a distance. He would then say, Father? But this is when Naruto jumps off of Kurama's head and he looks down at Gara, knocking him out, causing Shikaku to lose control. Naruto then fixes the seal that Gara has, and after he does, Naruto links himself and Kurama to Shikaku and Gara. Gara would then wake up in water as he looks up at Naruto, who had a hand out. Gara takes it and is pulled up as he sees his tail beast. And then Naruto would say, Shikaku, you need to be nicer to Gara and stop fighting with him. But Shikaku, would you rather be free and hunted by me or sealed within Gara? It will be silent, but then Kurama laughs, but quickly stops after Naruto turns in his direction. Anyway, let me show you something that you both could accomplish by working together. Naruto puts them in a genjutsu where they would see a reformed sand village under Gara's control. They see a stronger version of themselves working together to perfect their village. Naruto would then release the genjutsu and Gara wakes up in the real world sitting on top of Kurama with Naruto and Sasuke. Hey Gara, let's go stop this fighting. Sasuke stands up and then says, I'm going on ahead. Hey, Kurama, throw me. The fox doesn't hesitate by saying, with pleasure, you Chiha, and sends Sasuke further into the leaf where he would use his Suzano ribcage to break his fall. Naruto and Gara would then both ride their tail beasts as they then arrive in the center of the village where everyone looks in shock. I am Gara of the sand, and if you belong to my village, drop your weapons and leave this village with me. The tail beast then look around at everyone, beginning to look menacing. And then Naruto uses his ability to sense people who were alive. And then he says, oh no, as he jumps off of Kurama, running in the direction. But when he arrives, Haruzen was already dead. Damn it. He then begins to cry. He will pay for this. It's a promise. After this, because of what Naruto did, the leaf would have a stronger bond with the sand. But there would be a demanding question in the leaf. Who was the next Kage? Jiraiya in front of the leaf's council would say, isn't it obvious? He may be young, but Naruto is obviously the next Hokage. They would question him, but Jiraiya explains that Naruto could easily handle the job but they protested that the villagers would not support it. Jiraiya says that they'll have to deal with it if they want a strong Kage to protect them and someone with the heart of the people, someone who has critical decision and deduction skills, someone who would always put the village first like it was his family. They better choose Naruto or they'll regret it. The council would pause and discuss without Jiraiya hearing and then they would say that Naruto needs a trial run, so they would agree to make him a temporary Hokage. This 
would be to see if he could really handle the job like Jiraiya says. So, a couple days later, Naruto and the rest of the village would meet up in front of the Hokage's office. Everyone would wonder who the next Hokage was going to be. Naruto had frankly didn't care. He was going to continue helping the village whether he was Kage or not. But he assumed it was him anyway. Jiraiya would step up. Well, as you all know, Lord Third, as well as many other shinobi, have recently passed and lost their lives in the battle that had just happened. But do not lose hope, as we have elected a temporary Hokage. This will be when whispers began to spread around at who it could be. This job won't be easy, so will you accept the challenge? Naruto Uzumaki. They all then turn to Naruto, who is using a transformation jutsu to look more like his regular self. Naruto had vanished, teleporting next to Jiraiya with one of the seals that was placed on his back. I accept, he says while bowing. Many of the villagers began to scream while others began whispers of doubt. Later that day, Naruto calls Kakashi and Jiraiya into his office. Guard Sasuke Uchiha. If I'm correct, Orochimaru will come to steal his body soon. Why do you think that, Naruto? Kakashi would say. That mark near his neck. Well, Sasuke told me it makes him hunger for strength. So I assume that Orochimaru will use that to get Sasuke on his side. But he forgot one thing. Now that I'm near my full power, I can make Sasuke stronger myself. So his loyalty is to the leaf. I think I'll allow him to go though. So Sasuke, you can come in now. They watch as Sasuke appears from out of nowhere. All right, Sasuke Uchiha, I have a top S ranked mission for you. Fake desertion on the Leaf Village and watch Orochimaru for me. And when it comes time, kill him without hesitation. Once you've done that, I'll train you some more so that you can finally have your revenge on your elder brother. Sasuke's Mangekyo Sharingan would activate this statement. As you wish, Lord Fifth. Naruto smiled, dismissing everyone from his office. And after this, Naruto walks around the village, getting smiles and waves from some of the villagers, while some scoffed at the idea of a nine-tailed demon being the Hokage. Naruto wondered what all the other Hokage's lifetimes were like. And was it this peaceful, or was it more chaotic? Naruto had learned a lot about history from Hagoromo and Karama, and it seemed that he had it easier than most of the other Akage, but it still wasn't the best. He knew he could do more for the world. As he thought this, he then hears a familiar voice of Hagoromo, the Sage of Six Pals. Naruto, guide your people with wisdom, loyalty, and love. Naruto nodded at these words, recognizing the voice. He would then go and get something to eat. As he sits down at Ichiraku Ramen, the man then said, The Hokage doesn't need to pay. It's on the house, Naruto. But Naruto pays anyway. The title of Hokage does not mean anything. I am still Naruto Uzumaki at the end of the day. The man smiles, giving Naruto a bowl of ramen. And later that night, Naruto sits near the apartment or house of Sasuke Uchiha. And this is when the sound four appears, taking Sasuke. Kakashi and Jiraiya would try to catch up, but they sent attacks back at him. That would make them fall and lose sight of them. And this is when Naruto appeared next to them. Good job faking that. He made it look pretty real. And now, as Sasuke dashes behind them in the shadows, he hears Naruto's voice. Don't forget who you are and who you are truly loyal to, Sasuke you will become the hero of the Leaf Village. Weeks go by and Naruto was sitting in his office and then he heard a knock at the door. Come in. And this is when two people in black robes with red clouds walked in. Ah uh, yes, Itachi Uchiha and Kisame, the tailless tailed beast. I've been expecting to see you both. I have heard that you were in the line of fire. I just didn't know where. Well, you've both made this easier for me. Kisame then looks at Itachi. 
Are you sure he's the Jinchuriki? Why is he a Kage? Shut up, Kisame. We have a job to do regardless. Naruto laughs and then he uses the human path to take information from Kisame and killing him in the process. Alright Itachi, now will you come back to the leaf or stay a rogue and let your brother hunt you down? Itachi would leave the building, but as soon as he walks out, he sees all the Jonin Sensei and then a Naruto clone as well. I don't think you can get out of this one Itachi. Itachi looks down, fool, as he activated his Suzano rib cage, causing everyone to back away but Naruto. Well Itachi, he then sends a water jutsu. But Itachi countered using a fire style jutsu, and this created a mist and steam. This would actually allow Itachi to get away, but as he runs through the forest, he then realized that Naruto had did it on purpose. And as he came to this realization, Naruto appeared in front of him. Well now, I guess we can talk in private. Itachi would tell Naruto all the intel he has, and Naruto in exchange heals his illness, and his current blindness. Alright Itachi, the rest is up to you to keep up this act. Itachi nods, heading off, and then the clone of Naruto poofs. After this, many weeks later, Naruto would actually be given the title of Hokage, and have his face in the Hokage monument. Years go by, as Naruto had helped the village become stronger and flourish as we now enter Naruto Shippuden. It's been about two and a half years now, hasn't it Kakashi? Yes, Lord Fifth, and you have been doing a great job as Kage. You've improved the leaf in every aspect. This is when Shikamaru walks in, holding a stack of papers, almost every aspect. Naruto scoffs, but then smiles, as he then looks outside of the window. It's been a little too peaceful. I just hope we're ready when the Akatsuki attacks again. In another part of the leaf, Sakura was going through intense training with one of Naruto's clones. Over the years, she had perfected and learned many jutsus to the point where Naruto would also teach her medical ninjutsu. Right now, in the leaf, she is regarded as one of the top ranked ninjas. She didn't have the strength of 100 seals, but I'd say this Sakura would probably wipe the floor with the original timeline version of herself. This is when Tamari from the sand walked into his office. Shikamaru looks back at her. Oh, what a drag. She looks at him. Not now, loser. Naruto, Gara is in trouble. Naruto's clones would then spread out around the village and teleport people to his office. Sakura, Neji, and Eno all appear in his office. What's the situation, Tamari? Gara was attacked in the village by two Akatsuki members. Naruto looks at everyone in the room. I'll send a clone with you all, but go now and don't waste any time. Naruto uses his clone to teleport Shikamaru, Samari, Sakura, Neji, and Eno all to the sand village first. They would quickly enter, and this is when Kankuro is healed by Sakura. You all might have been wondering why Kakashi wasn't sent. Well, that's because Naruto had a different idea for him. Naruto then tells Kakashi to gather, well, the last generation of Jonin, and secure the land of fire to prevent any attacks on the leaf. Kakashi's team would include a Naruto clone, himself, Inoichi, who was Ino's father, Shikaku, who was Shikamaru's father, Choza, who was Choji's father, Azuma, and my guy. They would then head off as well. So now, the leaf was in full care of Naruto Uzumaki and Karama, the king of tail beasts, the nine-tailed fox. Naruto tells the villagers that the sand was attacked, but it will soon be under control. This is when Naruto's clones that were spread around the leaf began to go to the edge of the village as they used a bunch of truth-seeking orbs to cover the village in a black dome. This way, many attacks could be avoided. And then he would say, For now, the leaf is under lockdown. If someone you know is on their way back from the leaf, 
the clones will let them in because they do have knowledge of many people in the leaf. But if you want to make sure, you can go to yourself and you can tell the clones to look out for these types of people and describe them to them. And then when they see them, they'll release parts of the dome and let them in. Let's pause for a moment because a lot is going on. You guys might be wondering why Naruto doesn't use all his power to just kill the Akatsuki now. Naruto is now a full-fledged Kage, and with power comes diplomacy. If Naruto were to display a monstrous amount of power, this will put every other village on edge. That because they don't have good relations with the Leaf right now, there is a chance of war. So for now, Naruto uses his head and the ninjas at his disposal to do his work for him. But he still does help out with his clones, just to secure the mission. Now, back to the story. Naruto would look at a smaller version of Kurama who he kept in his office with him. Send a message to all the Jinchuriki for me about Gara, and tell them to inform their Kages. Kurama does so and Naruto smiles. Far away, first in the land of the sand. Naruto's clone and Sakura had already cured Konkuro of his injuries as stated before. And since Kakashi wasn't there, Granny Chio didn't attack them as well. After this, they caught up with Daedara. Sakura and Neji would fight Sasori, while Tamari and Shikamaru went to fight Daedara. The problem with this fight is that Daedara is airborne, and I don't want to say that Shikamaru's shadow possession could work on enemies even when they're high up and their shadows would still be on the ground, but I think I could stretch that and say that it does work that way because it's still the shadow. So that's what we're going to use. And for now, Shikamaru has full control of Daedara as he forces the blonde to drop Gara to the ground. But this time, Naruto, Neji, and Sakura would have defeated Sasori with ease. And Naruto would catch the fallen Gara and immediately heals him. This is when they look for Daedara, but he could still send his clay birds at Shikamaru which caused him to release the hold that he had on him. So, he was flying away at the moment. They decided just to go back to the sand village for now, and Ino would relay the information all the way back to Naruto in the leaf village. Naruto would nod. Good work, guys. For now, I want you all to stay there, just to secure Gara's safety. Will do, Lord Fifth. I'll contact you if anything more happens. Out in the land of fire, Kakashi's team was scouting and they didn't find anything out of the ordinary so after a week they began to head back to the leaf and by this time everything had settled down. Shikamaru's squad was still in the sand though because Naruto wanted to make absolutely sure about Gara's safety. Kakashi's team wouldn't have ran into Kisame because he had died many years ago when he had came to the leaf. So. We can now go back to Shikamaru's squad as they begin heading back. And as they do, they run into Itachi. Naruto's clone looked at Itachi and noticed that he was in much better condition now. And that was thanks to him. This is when Itachi gives Naruto that special gift. And after this, Itachi disappears. Eventually, the team would make it back to the leaf safely. That night, Naruto would have a meeting with the elders. Don't you think it's time to bring Sasuke Uchiha back? Naruto smirked. I can bring him back at any time I want, holding up a flying Raijin kunai. But I'll allow him to stay a little longer. Why, Lord Fifth, one would ask. Because he's doing research for me on Rochimaru. This is when Danza walks in. What kind of research, Lord Fifth? Naruto stands up smiling as he walks and then he whispers in Donzo's ear you better run because as soon as he comes back to the village he'll be told the truth Donzo remains calm you wouldn't dare Naruto pats his shoulders you have about two days so make sure you run far but it's too late for that anyway Donzo would wonder what he means and then he realizes that Naruto had just placed a seal on him. And then 
he rips off his robes, shocking everyone in the room. But he still has bandages covering his arms with all the Uchiha's eyes. But Naruto smiled. That's not the only seal I have on you, idiot. You think I'm that stupid? Naruto looks back at all the other elders. Actually, I'll bring them back tonight. So, as the night almost rises to early morning, Sasuke would be laying in his room. And this is when Naruto appeared. So, my time here is up, isn't it, Naruto? Yes, it is, Sasuke. And once you kill him, we can continue with your mission. Naruto and Sasuke would grab some of the people that Sasuke had made friends with. And then, they would go and find Orochimaru. So it seems you all have turned on me. Before Orochimaru could even finish with his sentence, he was stabbed with the lightning blade and then an Amaterasu was sent at him as he burned to ashes. Team Heavy and Naruto walk outside and they would take a lot of Orochimaru's research as then it would begin to storm and Sasuke smirks. All of you stand behind Naruto and this is when Sasuke shows off his Kirin. This completely destroys the base and they were teleported back to the leaf. Naruto gives Team Heavy all leaf headbands and he gives Sasuke his headband back. This is when they all put them on and he would give them luxury apartments to live in the leaf for now. And this would be when Sasuke would return back to his office. Sasuke you will be in charge of this team, and you will be the one to change the ninja world. The system we have implanted is horrible. You, me, and Itachi will change everything. What do you mean by Itachi? He's the enemy, Naruto. Don't you understand? He killed the clan. Naruto then hands Sasuke a file, and once Sasuke finishes reading, his eyes were activated, and tears began to fall out of them. Naruto, you are Kage. And as a Kage, you can help me change everything. Naruto smiled. Get a good night's sleep, because tomorrow morning, you'll be leaving with your teams. But I do have one request. Sasuke bows his head. Yes, Lord Fifth. You'll have to wear these. And then Naruto hands him an Anbu outfit with a fox mask. We will. Now, after night passes for another day, Early morning would come, and now we see Sasuke, Jugo, Suigetsu, Karin, and a Naruto clone head out in Anbu outfits as they then go to bring Itachi back to the leaf side. And for now, we'll be taking the story through Sasuke's point of view. Sasuke and his Anbu squad leave the village and head in the direction of an Uchiha hideout. I will find you, Itachi. Naruto's clone then says, I can just teleport us there if you want. No, I must do this my own way, Naruto. You've already done enough, and I thank you for that. So, now, along the way, Naruto decides to teach Karin more ways to heal and use medical ninjutsu, just in case something happens. He helps Jugo calm his rage, and he helps Suigetsu be more creative. Once they reach the Uchiha clan hideout, Naruto and Sasuke will be the only ones to head in. And when they enter, they see Itachi sitting on a throne. So Sasuke, you've arrived. Sasuke drops his mask and so does the Naruto clone. I know everything Itachi, so tell me why you haven't killed Danzo for what he's done. Itachi stands up in disbelief of Sasuke's knowledge, but he knows that Naruto had told him because I was sent to protect the leaf, and I did what I had to, for your safety. Naruto sits down. Well, now that I'm Kage, we want you fully back on our side. Sasuke pulls out an Anbu mask and outfit from his bag. Come with me, Itachi, and we'll do it together. Itachi looks down at Sasuke. I'll listen to your words and do as you ask if you defeat me in battle. Sasuke smirks. Amaterasu, but Itachi counters with his own. Naruto would sit and watch 
as the brothers then go back and forth. Sasuke pulls out his blade to stab Itachi, but the elder brother was quick due to his illness being gone. So Itachi was able to dodge and counter by slicing Sasuke's chest, but Sasuke would then turn into lightning and from behind Itachi, Sasuke would have stabbed his back. Naruto's clone looks up to see a red Suzano ribcage and Sasuke smirks, noticing that his blade was broken. Naruto then yells out, you know I have to get you a new one now. Yeah, whatever, and Sasuke smirks, so you have it as well. He flips back, making his purple Suzano ribcage with an arm, as he then creates blades of black flames. It's over, Itachi. Sasuke swings his blade down, but Itachi Suzano evolves, now having the armored form. Foolish little brother, you still need more. Shut up. I don't need hatred, and I never did. I never needed Itachi. What I always needed was you. I need my elder brother by my side, so we can change this world together. Itachi would release the Suzano, and then falls to his knees crying as Sasuke walks over. And then he looks up, tapping Sasuke's head. I give up. You win, Sasuke. Naruto's clone then walks over. Hey, Naruto. But before he Sasuke could finish, Naruto had knocked both the brothers out. When Sasuke woke up, he was in a hospital bed and his eyes were covered. So now that you both are awake, your next mission is to hunt down Donzo while I go to the Kage Summit. If you take your bandages off, you'll see that your eyes have advanced once again. So, I'll see you both soon. Naruto's clone then poofs as the two brothers then get ready. They walk outside of the hideout to see Karn, Jugo, and Suigetsu. Sasuke looks at them. Let's move. As they now head out to find Danzo. But let's go back to the perspective of Naruto as we then go back to the leaf for a little bit. Naruto scheduled a meeting with the elders and as they waited for Lord Fifth to enter the room, the air became stiff and cold as if someone had froze it. But this is when Naruto walked in. You all are guilty. And before they could argue, Kakashi and Shikamaru killed them. Both of you clean this mess up and give them proper burials. We need to begin a new age of ninja. It is my goal to obtain peace, but I will do it my way, without war. Naruto would leave the room and he bumps into Jiraiya. Oh, Perry Sage, good to see you. I have a mission for you as well. Defeat pain. Jiraiya's eyes widen. Lord Fifth, there's a chance I won't come back from this mission. Naruto smirked, creating a clone. I'll be going with you, of course. Dry smiled of relief, knowing that he would have died, and he's happy that Naruto's clone is coming with him. Back with the Uchiha brothers, Itachi would tell Sasuke everything from his point of view, causing Sasuke to despise the ninja system more, but he knows right now Naruto is working his hardest to change it, and that was why he respected Naruto and his loyalty was still there for him. Itachi and Sasuke were covering their faces while eating and they would hear Leaf Ninja at a restaurant as they asked the bartender, hasn't Lord Donzo come through this way? The bartender would nod. Yeah, actually when I talked to him he seemed to be in a hurry cause he left for the Mist Village. The two ninjas would nod leaving. Without another moment, the Ambu squad grabbed their gear and headed out. They move fast towards the mist village and as they reach the docks, they see a man in robes on the boat and while sitting drinking tea, he is stabbed by a black flamed arrow. But this is when he appears to be fine. Using Izanagi, Donzo changed reality to survive. But this is when another Suzano would cut him in half. But he would redo the process. Sasuke has had enough. And then he goes in, cutting off his arm, not wanting this battle to go on any longer. After this, the two brothers will stand over Donzo as they then kill him. 
far away in the land of lightning is where the Kage Summit was held. Naruto sat near Gara. Well, it seems everyone is here, so I guess I'll get started. First, the group known as the Akatsuki has already began their moves, and they failed to capture each of the Jinchuriki, as you all know that. Next, we have to change the systems that we have relied on for too long. After this, I'd like to form an alliance between all villages. As they then began, the Raikage questioned Naruto's leadership. With him being so young, he's sure to destroy everything that they have worked for. Naruto smiles. Alright then, let's talk about my feats for my village compared to yours. I've secured the land of fire on multiple occasions. I've helped the sand as well and established an efficient trade routes to avoid bandits that plague the world because of our terrible system. I've also gotten rid of Orochimaru and as we speak, I believe Donzo and Payne are being dealt with. We see far away that Donzo was killed and now in another area, we see that Naruto and Jiraiya's clone stand over the dead body of all the paths of pain. Everyone in the room would be speechless, and that's when someone else arrives in the room. Madara Uchiha sits on the table in front of all the other Kage. The Red Kage rushes at him, but he goes through him. And this is when Naruto smirks, and for the split second of time, Kakashi had his Mangekyo Sharingan active, and from inside the Kamui dimension, he had Naruto's clone. So, all the other Kage watch, as Madara's eye is then ripped out. Well, not exactly ripped out. It more looks like it was sucked in to the Kamui dimension from the inside by Naruto's clone. Naruto then looks down at Madara, who couldn't escape. It's over. Naruto created truth-seeking orbs, well, a blade, and then cut off the head of Madara. From behind Naruto, Kakashi then began to scream as he warped out Naruto's clone, who had the eye of Obuto Uchiha. And then he handed it to Kakashi. All right, I'll be back. Naruto disappeared with blinding speed, going outside and finding Black Zetsu, as he would then try to run, but Naruto was too quick, grabbing him by his face, the will of Kaguya. It's unfortunate you have to die. Planetary devastation. Naruto watches as the rock flies into space. Far away, a Naruto clone convinced Nagato to come to their side. And this is where I'm going to stretch the story a little bit. But I would say Naruto's clone uses up all his energy to fully heal Nagato so that he was mobile again. So now Konan and Nagato were on their side. Once the meeting of the Kage was over, they all issued a hunt for the remaining Akatsuki members, and Naruto would return to the Leaf Village, and he would wait. Days go by as Team Heavy and Jiraiya returns with his students. Alright Shikamaru, now explain the plans for peace. Shikamaru then held up a thick booklet. First, we have to wait on the signature of all the Kage. Two, the peace doctrine but for now lord fifth would like you all to remain in the leaf so no missions will be active many of the clans were killed so we'd like sasuke and itachi uchiha to help restore their clans both of them at least having two kids whether that be with one woman or two and we'd like karin and nagato to help as well by restoring the uzumaki clan that is only if you want to but the Uzumaki clan would be in full protection of the leaf so that their destruction would never happen again. Shikamaru would go through even more plans until he finally says that a ceremony will be held in the leaf tomorrow. The next day, Naruto stands on top of the Kage building and on the ground, all the villagers were watching. I've called everyone here today to show my respect, gratitude, and honor our true heroes of the leaf. First, Itachi Uchiha, a child who is burdened with the problems of ignorant adults. He then puts a medal around Itachi's neck. Next, Sasuke Uchiha, who has slayed Orochimaru who was a threat to the leaf for many years, even killing Akage. 
putting a medal around his neck as well. Nagato Uzumaki, the person who started this peace campaign his own way and has helped me to see it in a different way as well. After this, he walks to Kakashi. And lastly, my sensei, who helped me defeat the great Madara Uchiha. They would all bow to the leaf as Naruto presents them. These are your heroes. The leaf goes into eruption, screaming and cheering. And Naruto looks back at the people who were awarded, and they were crying as they bowed his head. He then cried, bowing his own head. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you all.